The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residents and its forgotten history. Hello everybody, my name's Captain Dennis and I'll be your host on today's episode of Squalus Marine Divers. Today we're going to dive on a location called the Spindle, some people call it the Lollipop, but it's a big pile of rocks and it's a dangerous spot at low water. You could really mess your boat up. Here's a sonar image of the site and here's where the Spindle is. All those rocks, which makes it great fishing. We've had a horrible season of rain. A whole month of June was rain and the visibility starting to improve. Here we have a piece of car part. I'll have to ask my friend Todd over at uh, his shop what make and model this is. Looks like a brake drum. Oh, look at that little striped bass. And here's another one. So at least we've got two, which is what you would need if you need to do new brakes. So maybe I can have these machined down, Todd. What do you think? If you look over here on the left, there he is. Just another schooly striped bass just hanging out here on the rocks looking for a free lunch. And here we come across one of many great giant boulders. You can really see how big these are. It's probably about the size of a sofa. Here's me next to it. Maybe, okay, it's a big sofa. But here's me next to it, so you can kind of see how big it is. It's nice when you're down here and you're relaxing and you're just diving. Oh, and something like that happens. That was a fluke that was so camouflaged that he saw me first and he beat feet. You know you're rewinding that. But we're going to keep on going. Here we are at the base of the riprap with the pile of rocks that the spindle rests on. And it's a big fishing spot. And here you can see, here's some fishing weights. And here's another weight. And this is a three-ouncer. And this one is, I think, a two-ouncer. And lead is worth a lot of money. So we pick them up, keep the neighborhood clean. Oh, wait, 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 and wait for it. Wait, lead weights. So we're still making our way up the rip rap and oh, look at that, another fluke. Again, this is a big fishing spot, and where there's people, we find people stuff. This is the bottle. It's an old bottle. I've got so many, and just a little word to the wise, you can collect a lot of bottles, but eventually you'll have to move, and it's a nightmare to wrap them all up. So I'm, I'm going to leave this bottle, which is a big deal for me. I'll let another diver find it. Now we're getting closer to the top, and look, another bottle. Now, this one's embossed. On the bottom, it says Connecticut Breweries. 
Whoa, almost. And you can see it's Connecticut Breweries, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Not sure how old, but I've already got a few of these, so I'll leave that. Coming down on the spindle, look at this guy. It's a little blackfish who's a little confused and concerned about who I am. This is the side of the spindle. If you go back and you look at the sonar, it's the cylindrical stone that they placed here. There's a bunch of blackfish hanging in really close to this thing. There's a line hanging off of the side of the spindle. Which, I don't know, was maybe cleated off, is my guess. Or maybe this is just some something to weight this rope down. We come around the side of the spindle's base... And we bump into some unsuspecting blackfish. Or at least that's what I think they are. All this talk about this spindle and lollipop, we might as well take a look at it while we're here. They replaced this a few years ago and they used a cylindrical stone instead of a cube. And I'm guessing this cylindrical stone will deal with waves better than a flat surfaced rock that probably gets knocked over all the time. But she's a big girl. Now, I don't know how this caught my eye, but it did. I saw a straight line in between these two rocks, and... We look at that. Somebody's lost anchor. This place had anchors and anchors. And this is that one anchor. And then I go down a little bit. And I find some chain, which is tied to, guess what? An anchor. Another anchor. It's been here a while. It's crumbling in my hand. I didn't really feel like recovering all these, so if you want to go out there and get them, go crazy. I always hear people say, you can't see anything in the sound. The sound has its own unique beauty that you can't get anywhere else. And it's got its own unique fish. I mean, it's it's like the Bahamas, but we got we have fluke. Look at this. There's no fluke in the Bahamas. You can't see fluke down there. You gotta dive in the sound. You wanna see fluke? Look at that. Boom. Another fluke. I know you're watching that again. You're probably rewinding it right now. Now, shh, be very quiet. Turn around. Anytime. I see you. There he is. This is another fluke. They're funny because sometimes they split and sometimes they hang out like you can't see me. This guy's one of those you can't see me types. So I start heading back to the boat, and I see this. And I'm like, is that a fishing pole? And it's under the rock. I don't know how that got under that rock. It's not a fishing pole, but over the winter, I broke my friend John's deck brush. And look, John, I got you a new one. I almost swam right into this guy, which is one of the purple jellyfish. These are the kind that sting. No degree in marine biology here. But I know these sting, because I've swum through them, and they sting. But what was cool is this guy had a bunch of little, little tiny, tiny fish. See him off to the left? I don't know what they're doing or what they are. I've never seen this before in seven years of diving in the sound. Funky, weird stuff. But she sure is gorgeous. So right before I make my way back up to the boat, I come across this thing, which is about three feet from my anchor. It's another anchor. So I didn't have the patience to do a lift bag and I had some surface help so I just had them send a rope down and here's me cutting the old rope away so I can put some new rope in the shackle. Roop? What's roop? Not roop, rope. Working underwater is just like working above water except you're wet 
and you've got a life support system on your back. So you do it long enough, it's just like being up top. So we're just about done. We'll do a little bowling here. Rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, goes back in the hole again. Hey, I got it. Okay. So we're going to move this away from my anchor so they don't get all discombobulated and hung up and fetched up on each other. And I'm going to get out of the water and have John and his son pull up the anchor. I'd like to thank John and his son for helping out on the surface today. We ask you to check us out on YouTube, Squalls Marine, and on Facebook, Squalls Marine Divers, and on SquallsMarine.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.